coming up with red flashing lights would mean something is wrong. I'm Erin and this is Danny and the littlest member of our family river. We are making our way around Australia with our home in tow. Subscribe to follow along and keep up to date with our adventures. Welcome back. So today's the day we crossed the Nullarbor. So we just left Norseman, which is basically the start of the Nullarbor. It's going to be three or four days of just solid driving. We're going to pretty much shoot straight across to Adelaide. We're going to stop at a few spots along the way to get some good scenery and stuff like that. Ready to go? Yep. Let's go. Let's do it. So we're stopping having a bit of a lunch. So we're about 250 k's away from our overnight stop. So we're stopping in a place a bit past Cockabilly. It's a free camp. So at the moment, we're just doing a bit of a walk. You know, have a bit of a break because we've been driving for hours. Go take the little fellow for a bit of a walk. Hey, River. We should go for a bit of a walk around. Aaron's in there making us a bit of uh, afternoon snack. Probably going to have a fruit bowl with some yogurt or something. So I was actually very surprised how busy the Nullarbor is actually. Like there's cars going past all the time. Lots and lots of trucks. I kind of thought it'd be much quieter, you know, because everyone talks about it as if like it's a big deal going across the Nullarbor. But so far it's like very busy. There's quite a few service stations too. There's one, I think the furthest one is only like 190 k's between, so it's not really an issue at all really. It's kind of annoying how much rubbish you see all these rest stops pull up and it's just like, there's crap everywhere. You know, people just seem to just pull up and throw their stuff out onto the side of the road. Disgusting really. It's been a long day of driving. We just got to the end of the 90 mile straight. So it's basically Australia's longest road. It's like 150 kilometers long. And it's like perfectly straight. So it's very boring. It's just a straight line forever. We're lucky the Canon has the uh, adaptive cruise control with the lane center keeping. So it makes it a lot easier. So I just finished filling up with fuel. It's $2.73 per litre. So that's not the most expensive we've paid, but that's getting very up there again. That's what you expect though when you cross the Nullarbor. It gets very expensive because it's in the middle of nowhere. So. When we were on Tom Price, it was $2.85 a litre. That's the most expensive we've paid on the whole trip so far. I think there's actually certain points on the Nullarbor at the moment that are like $2.90. Yeah, it's not bad. So it's 6.30 p.m. We just got to the campsite. It's been a long day driving. I think it'd be in the car for like 11 hours. This part looks amazing though, you should see the view from here. So good. And so this place is actually a free camp and it's right near Madura. There's a sign that says look out just before Madura and you just turn up that, follow it up the road for a bit go past some yellow bins and that is a huge area you can explore around and pick your own spot somewhere. You also get four bars of 3G which is pretty good. Yeah so like a lot of the Nullarbor you still get Telstra reception, 3G, you don't really get any 4G anywhere. You can camp right up against the cliff there if you want, that's that view I was showing before so there's a really nice view across that whole cliff. But I decided to come up here in a bit of a flatter area because it's just a bit easier with the caravan set it up and got plenty of space and watch the sunset, very nice. Good morning, another lovely day on the Nullarbor. This morning we've only got about a three and a half hour drive I think it is, so we're going to go stop at the border, which is Eucla, between the border of WA and South Australia. Obviously you've got to throw out all your veggies and stuff. There's like a big list of certain things you can and can't have. 
So some things have a question mark, so you've got to ring them up if you see if you're allowed to take them or not. So we're just going to go stop there, eat whatever we have left that we either can't eat or have to throw out or whatever, sort that out. And then we're going across to the Bunda Cliffs, which is going to be awesome. It looks like a really cool spot, so I really can check that place out. Might have a, like a, a set up a fire and stuff too, so it should be good. Just having one last look at this view this morning. It's kind of cool because it just goes, drops off and then just flat for like as far as the eye can see. It almost reminds me of like a African plain or something, savannah or something like that. The joys of having toddlers on long trips. Five minutes after getting the car to go, I need a pee, you need a pee. You can pull over and do toilet stops. And it's always instantly. It's just like, I need to go right now, quick, hurry up. That's six. Another five minutes later, we got to stop again, taking the toilet. This time it's a number two. <laughs> All right, stop number two done. Let's get back in the car. Hopefully we can actually get some kilometers done. <laughs> Right here. Come on, mate, get out of the way. There he goes. We just turned up in Eucla, so we've got to use up all the rest of the food and crap we got that we like got to throw away. So we got some fuel here too. So I saw the fuel on the way in, it was like $2.67, so that's a bit cheaper than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be like close to $3 the time we got here, because it was when I looked at Fuel Spy a couple of days ago, so that's pretty good. It's still a bit more expensive than you pay everywhere else, but not too bad. So we're at Eucla, which is just about on the border. And as you can't take any fresh fruit and veg across the border, we're just having a big feed of all of the fruit that we had left in the van to get rid of it quickly. We're in South Australia, baby. Buy a WA, hey. Yep. The view was so good though. Yeah, the view was great. So we're heading, we're going for a walk down here to the border sign to get a photo with the sign. So the WA checkpoint right here is uh, actually right on the border. Whereas the actual South Australian one is not for another 500 kilometers. So you don't need to throw your food out straight away. So we were at Euclid and we thought, oh, we've got to quickly eat all our food because we're going across the border, we need to throw it out. But the guy at Euclid said, actually you can like go another 500 k's before you got to throw it out. So we could have actually used it for another day, but oh, too late now. So we're at the uh, South Australia border sign, getting the obligatory sign photo. Second photo opportunity at the uh, giant kangaroo holding a Vegemite jar. Can't miss that, can you? <laughs> Hiding in the old pouch. You guys excited? Yeah. Looks stunning, hey? Uh, the Great Australian Bite. Iconic location of Australia. Just this little walk, short walk to the end here. We can have a look out the view. This should be pretty awesome. That's amazing. How good is that? Right, so now we're at the Bunda Cliffs campground. It's like a free camp. This massive area, you can just pull up anywhere. And you can see the uh, Great Australian Bite right there behind us. Right on the edge of the cliff.
I find it interesting that you can find shells way up here on top of the Great Australian Bight. There's all these shells everywhere. I sort of think like, where do these come from? Are these like really old or is there somehow like some sort of creatures that live up on the top here or I don't know, it's interesting. Cause how the hell they get way up on top of here? Looking for treasures. Looking for pegs, eh? Looking for spare ten pegs. <laughs> no barriers, eh? How crazy is this time zone here? It's currently almost half past nine and look how bright it is outside still. The sun's only just set now. River's still awake. There's no way he's going to sleep until the sun's down. So we've been trying to get him to sleep for like an hour and a half and it's just not happening. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. The wind's dropped off. It's so calm and still. What a beautiful sunset that was. I forgot to put a time lapse out. It would have been really nice. So day three today, we've just got in the car. We don't really have a plan on where we're going or where we're staying tonight. Um, we need to drive somewhere and get some internet and have a bit of a look on wiki camps to try to find a good spot. We've got a few places in mind, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure. But I think it's probably going to be again. on the road again. I think it's probably going to be like maybe a five, six ish hour drive. That's kind of what we're planning. We slept in a bit this morning. It's kind of 8.45 at the moment, so a bit of a late start for us. But I think this time zone change kind of threw us a bit. Because um, the sun didn't go down until like 9.30 last night and then I, all of us went to bed quite late. Yeah, it was like two and a half hour time difference, so... Yeah, so we're kind of still on WA time, I think we're a bit... So we need to try fix that today and somehow get to bed a bit earlier tonight so we can, you know, not get up at 8.30 in the morning. So. <laughs> and again today, three minutes down the road and we're on um, P stop number one. I think um, three minutes is a new record. This old Nullarbor Roadhouse. She's a, she's a doozy. What have we got in here? Not much really. What is it? Here we go. Big store. It's like a really low ceiling in here. Old house too. Look at the old too. Oh, look at all the gears and everything in the old thing. Classic. Daddy. So I've just had to pull over here because my um, tow pro elite was coming up with red flashing lights, which means something is wrong. So I've pulled the uh, tow plug out here, and um, it's getting a bit corroded in there. I think it's got a bit of salt water in it, so it's having trouble with connection. So I'm gonna have to probably replace this whole plug soon but uh, for now I'll just try and pull it out and re-jig it all up and hopefully get it working again. Check the flies out here. It's probably the worst flies we've seen the whole trip. It's just insane. There's flies are everywhere. So I managed to get that uh, trailer lights fixed up for now but I'm gonna have to put a new plug on it because it's got like too too much corrosion in there. But um, yeah we can't, there's no shops around here so it'll be a couple of days before I can get another one. Hopefully that holds out for now. Just put up at the quarantine station at Sedina. It still seems really odd to me that the quarantine station is literally like 500 kilometers into South Australia. But anyway, is what it is. Um, so yeah, I think they, you just pull up here and they have a check through the van and make sure that there's no fruits and veggies and stuff like that. So I think we got rid of everything. Yeah, hopefully. I think we ate everything. <laughs> we'll it should find be, out. Should be all good. We're just going to declare a few things and yeah. it should be sweet. How'd you go? Nothing All hidden? Good, we're clear. <laughs> All good. Sweet. Sweet. Onward. <laughs> so we've officially finished the Nullarbor. How good's that? So what did you think of it overall? Pretty easy. Yeah. Pretty easy. Um, it was a lot better than I expected. I re actually really enjoyed it. Especially like those couple of free camps we stayed at were 
awesome. Like, highly recommend both of those spots. Yeah, it's actually quite busy on the road. There's plenty of people around. There's no issue with fuel. It seems to serve us. Yeah. Wow. And honestly, the fuel price, like, yeah, it was expensive, but it was pretty much the same as a lot of other parts of WA. Oh, well, yeah, North, North End WA. So, yeah. yeah. $2.70, $2.60, some price. Well, I've used about $450 worth of fuel. Yeah. So not too bad, really. We're averaging about 13 to 14 litres for 100 kilometres. So we're going to go to a free camp tonight, but we're not now because it's like 50 k's now winds. It's like super windy. Yeah, we figured it'd just be pretty, pretty awful, and yeah. we end up just stuck inside the van the whole time anyway. So, so we're going to have a shower. It'll be nice to have a shower. <laughs> it's been a few days. Yeah. So the place we're headed to tonight, I think, is called Smoky Bay. Was it Smoky or Streaky Bay? Smoky Bay, isn't it? Smoky Bay, okay. So it's Smoke, Smoky either. Bay Islands Caravan Park. I don't yeah. know. I'll actually put the name in the yeah. thing. But it's got really good reviews on Wiki Camps. So hopefully it's nice. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much. We're just going to go there and have a shower. Yeah, and... basically have a shower just and then the stay the night. And then we'll leave tomorrow morning. And then hopefully get some more free camps in the next few days. Yeah. That's the plan. Although we do have to pop into shops in Adelaide somewhere so that Danny can get a new, what is that, like a plug thing for the yeah. brake lights? Yeah, put a new set in trailer plug on. So we will and have to have do to that. And have to be more examining to make sure everything's sweet <laughs> the way through. So hopefully we got to get it all fixed in the next few days while we're in Adelaide area and then we can continue. That's the end of this one guys, hope you enjoyed it, it's been a really fun week travelling across the Nullarbor. Actually it wasn't a week, it was about three or four days. It was like three days, yeah. but yeah. I actually loved it, so really yeah, absolutely got to do the Nullarbor. So we'll catch you on the next one guys. See you.